Mm -hmm. You ready? <clears throat> Can you find the truth of God from the King James Version? Can you find the truth of God from the King James Version? Now, <clears throat> Isaiah 45, 7. Number one, God created both good and evil. That's in the King James Version. Number two, all is of God. Acts 17, 25. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. Romans eleven thirty six. All is of God. And couple that with God created both good and evil. Man, you're hitting on some big truths here. Number three, God is the Savior of all mankind. 1 Timothy 4.10 can you find the truth of God from the King James Version? There's so many people who love the King James Version. They think it's, you know, the cat's meow. It has lots of mistakes, but you can still find the truth of God from the King James Version. And we're going to go, that's what we're doing is we're going over some things that you will find in the King James Version that lead you to believe something greater than what the Christian false teaching actually teaches. Isaiah 45, 7, God created all, both good and evil. Number two, Acts 17, 25, Second Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, Romans 11, 36, all is of God, all is out of God, through God and for God. Number three, God is the savior of all. Number four, the word eternal is not necessarily eternal. Here's the proof. <clears throat> Christ will reign forever and ever. In Revelation 15, 11, 15, Christ will reign forever and ever. Compare that to Christ will reign until something wonderful happens. 1 Corinthians 15, 25. So will Christ reign forever and ever or will he reign until something happens? <clears throat> Both verses are King James. Christ will reign forever and ever. Mm, that's interesting. But what's this over here? 1 Corinthians 15, 25, that Christ will reign until. This is King James. It's interesting. Next item, the everlasting hills versus the hills made low. Genesis 49, 26 talks about the everlasting hills. Isaiah 40, verse 4, talks about the hills that will be made low. So the everlasting hills are not really everlasting. You can get this from the King James. Item number C. Jonah was in the belly of the whale forever, says one verse. A few verses later, it says he was there for three days and three nights. Which is true. Was he there for three days and three nights or was he there forever? So exactly how long is eternal? You can question this whole thing right straight from the King James Version. Okay? So, item number five on this discussion. Can you find the truth from the King James Version? Item number five. The cross is the central theme of God's purpose, reaching way into the past and way into the future. The cross achieves what God wants. In Revelation 13 verse 8 it says and all that dwell on the earth shall worship worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world what in the world is this little phrase here the lamb slain from the foundation of the world it's a truth that before christ died on the cross the scriptures record him as the lamb slain from the very foundation of the world. I'm telling you, this, tr this is a truth that the cross is a central theme of God's purpose reaching way into the past and way into the future. This is the most important element on my um, little item on my discussion today, that the cross is a central theme of God's purpose. Let's go to number six. Number six, with the Bible's 800,000 some odd words, you must ignore some parts. 
No one can incorp incorporate or factor in everything and make sense of it all unless you ignore this part in order to place more emphasis on that part. Okay? The Bible has 800,000 words. You can't get a clear picture with your Western thinking, so-called logical mind. You're going to have to ignore some parts and put emphasis on other parts. Number seven, some parts of the Bible appear to contradict other parts. Number eight, the question is, what do you ignore and what do you emphasize? Number nine, if God is the savior of all, you can almost ignore the judgments of God. Put that in quotes. You can almost ignore the judgments, quote unquote, of God. Why? Because in the King James Version, you can see that the judgments of God were met in the cross. You don't need a literal translation or, you know, a, a concordance to see all of these things that I've mentioned so far. You can just find them right there in your old King James. Number 10. And if God is the Savior of all, judgments must be a part of the salvation process, not a hindrance to the salvation process. I'll read that again. If God is the Savior of all, as it says in 1 Timothy 4.10, if God is the Savior of all, then judgments must be a part of the salvation process, not a hindrance to the salvation process. Number 11. It seems to me that the concordant translation of the Bible is way better than the King James Version, but you can find many truths of God from the King James Version of the Bible. How? Number 12. How? Number 13. Limit the bad and expand the good. Is punishment everlasting? No. Punishment is not everlasting. Otherwise, Christ's death on the cross would be everlasting. How's that for a weird thought? If punishment is everlasting, then Christ's death on the cross would ha also have to be everlasting. Is judgment the moment where everything is too late? Too late and your fate is sealed. Is judgment the moment where everything is too late and your fate is then sealed? Doom! or bliss in heaven. No. Otherwise, Saul on the road to Tarsus would have been doomed. That moment in time was truly a judgment for Saul, who became Paul. That moment in time on the road to Tarsus, it wasn't too late for him. It was definitely a judgment time. What was the judgment? Christ Jesus said to Saul, why are you persecuting me? Wow. He didn't say it was too late. <laughs> he deserved the too late business because he had already put to death some of the saints of God. He does absolutely deserved this too late business. His fates would have been sealed if it had been up to most modern day free will help fire Calvinist Christians but it wasn't. <laughs> His fate was in the hands of a happy God who, through Christ, really sealed the deal on the cross. Okay, let's go over it again. Is judgment the moment where everything <laughs> is too late and your fate is sealed, doom or blessed? No, otherwise Saul on the road to Tarsus would have been doomed. The moment in time was truly a judgment for Saul, who became Paul. Also, here's the deal. Limit your audience, because most of the Bible was written specifically for the Jews, and it concerns promises made to them. It concerns God's dealings with them. It concerns how God is going to use them to bless the nations. Only Paul's letters were sent out to the Gentile nations, and there you'll find promises God makes to those of the nations and how God will use those of the nations to bless the whole universe. The Jews will bless the nations and those of the nations will bless the universe.
Do you see the big plan? The King James Version is not a perfect translation of the Bible, but you can still discover things there that will blow your mind. I was a King James kid for many years, and when I discovered First Timoth, I'm, I'm sorry, when I discovered Isaiah 45:7 that God created both good and evil, I was knocked off my high horse, and my mind went racing back and forth for many years, trying to reorganize everything I thought I knew about God. You see, my first years as a Christian, I was like most, basically a Zoroastrian dude. I kind of believed that there were two gods, one good and one evil. But there's not two gods. There's only one God who creates all things. Even Satan was created by God and Satan is not out of control. God has perfect control of that evil one. So Isaiah 45 7 shattered my Zoroastrian concept for me and eventually I could see that all is of God as revealed in Romans 11:36 etc. If you can get yourself a concordant literal New Testament in it, you'll discover that God's vocabulary is tighter than you might imagine. The King James Version is loose and sloppy in many areas, but the concordant translation does its honest best to reveal what God's Word says without standing between you and God's Word and without interpreting it for you. It just gives you the facts of the scriptures as best as it can you'll even discover that verb forms God uses are powerful and revealing in the concordant version for example John 3 16 the King James says God so loved the world as in past tense God so loved the world but the concordant literal New Testament says thus God loves the world Thus God loves the world. A timeless verb form. You can see many truths in the King James Version, and you'll find many more in the Concordant Version. God bless the King James. For many of us, it's all we had for years and years. Yes, it's a kind of cute, poetic, old English style, and yes, it's misleading when it comes to evil and the judgments of God, but you can still find many universal truths in its pages, even though you somehow feel you're cheating yourself or cheating the truth by ignoring difficult passage, but better to ignore the troublesome passage regarding hell than to diminish and belittle the work of God in the cross of Christ just because you don't see a way around the word eternal when it comes to eternal punishment. How much better to exalt and hold in high esteem, that is the glory, the work Christ did on the cross as God does in Romans 6.4. How much better to see the judgment as Saul did on the road to murder the saints. Judgment on that day led Saul to say the magic words, Who art thou, Lord? And with that question, the journey begins. And then the nations were blessed through the work of Saul. God, grace to you. Grace to you. Bye.